What's up guys, this is Kate Limited. Welcome to episode 3 of Shot Locked to Kingdom Hearts, where it's a podcast where I talk about everything Kingdom Hearts, from current aspects to it, to future things I wanted, and news of Kingdom Hearts. Now, before I start the episode, I do want to say that, like I said, in the past two episodes, I am trying to get this podcast onto audio surfaces, uh, so in case you don't really want to watch the video of it and you just want to listen to it, you can. And so far, I'm partially successful. I got it into a lot of services so far, probably like about seven-ish. I'll have them on the screen, like the ones that are available on right now i'm trying to get it on more and i'll see like how that goes uh one that i'm really trying to get it on right now is apple Podcasts, and that's uh, that's something i know that a lot of people listen to and personally i listen to podcasts on that too so hopefully i do get it on that soon so like if you want to listen to these services i'll have links for all of them in the description below a uh, huge thanks to anchor that's kind of the platform i'm using to distribute all my uh podcasts to, like all the services they've been handling all the work for me so that's been really amazing and it's like absolutely free so like if you do want to start a podcast too check them out they're amazing so if, if you're watching this later and maybe you know uh you want to listen to on another podcast service maybe more have been added if they have been added all added to the description below so just like if you want to check what it's on just check the description you should see all of them there or go to anchor.fm slash shot locked and you'll see a list of all the podcast services there so that's like all i really want to say before i started so other than that let's just get right into the postings So, welcome to the postings where I talk about Kingdom Hearts news from the past month or two, or it could be new, it, it depends. But, uh, and I give my opinions on it, like what I like about what I don't like about it, and you know, just feedback like that. So first, we're going to be talking about a geek.com review of the demo of Kingdom Hearts 3. So, uh, you know, there's been a demo of Kingdom Hearts 3, it's been everywhere, the one of the toy box, where it is uh, the Toy Story World, and Olympus Coliseum, where you get to fight the Rock Titan. So, Geek.com did a review of it, and I got this news story from Case13.com, so thanks for that. And I'm just gonna be going through a few points of their review, and like, kind of talking about it. So, the first thing is that, uh, they said that Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be 80 plus hours total, and 40 to 50 hours for story. Now, that is something that's, like amazing news for me i don't know if anyone really knows this but like an important thing for me when it comes to choosing out games is the length of it and uh, that's something a lot of people grow out of when they get older because you don't have like you know enough time to play games and that's certainly true for me i have a lot of games that i just like kind of drop after a while which i want to get back to because they are too long but even with that problem i do like longer games better because with games like so expensive these days even though i know that th i know they're not as expensive as they should be for the amount of work that's put in but Living in Canada where a brand new game is $80 and with tax you're pretty much paying $100 per game, Canadian dollars. That's a lot of money and that's not something you could just kind of like, you know, spend like a lot of. So for me, I always have to look for some kind of deal or some kind of like promotion to get a game if I do want to get a new. But if not, I'll have to wait like at least six months to a year to get a game like a little cheaper. So because of that, seeing that it's coming, you know, with so much like hours in it is, is amazing news for me and 80 plus hours is a lot i didn't expect this game to be that huge because i'm not sure if this was ha this happened but like when king mars 3 was first announced and they had like news there i think there was an interview with namora or someone said that it was going to be a long game but then i think that was proven false or something i remember there was like some talkings of that but then at the end of the day i kind of forgot about it. i'm like i don't think this is true it didn't seem like that reliable and like a lot of games especially bigger games are going for more of a shorter game length these days usually like for a solid story it's like a 20 to 30 hour game and that's considered long for like triple a games or like you know huge games so when it came to king mars 3 i was 100 percent expecting it's going to be 20 hours it's going to be 30 hours it's not going to be longer than that and seeing this the main story being 40 to 50 hours that's amazing i think that's as perfect for me if it goes like a little longer than that like a story like say 70 80 hours i think that's pushing it a bit too much and i think at that point you get to more like repetitive story things missions that are like repetitive and like you're kind of stretching the game out just for the sake of stretching it but with this length i think this is kind of perfect and this is something that i'm really looking forward to and i'm not sure how long kingdom hearts 2 was but that's a game i feel like was a very good length but i think I think that was probably a 20 30 hour story gameplay and maybe not even that because like even though i played the game recently i kind of attribute like how long the game is based on when i was a kid when i played down when i was a kid that game lasted months for me it lasted a very long time and that at least felt like a 20 30 hour game when i was younger i don't know what it actually is if it's longer i'd be surprised i don't think it is i feel like it's much shorter but like seeing that this is very long i love this is right up my alley and i'm so glad that this is true so another part of this review is that they talk about they can uh, equip three keyblades at once this isn't like the newest news we've known this before when the demo first came out but i never talked about it before so i decided to add it in anyways but they talk about that you can equip three keyblades at once and i believe you could switch 
threw them with a the d-pad or something i remember they talked about it before but i can't remember exactly when but i honestly really like those ideas the more kind of flexibility and variety you have in combat the better it is in my opinion because when a game say for example has like two things you can do in combat it gets pretty still and you can't really you know switch around that much and if you look at like other people playing your play styles are going to be pretty similar but the more type of play styles you add the more unique it could be and adding you know a way that you could hold more than one keyblade is amazing because you're going to know you know there's going to be these like strategizers or like speedrunners who are going to be putting these specific keyblades with certain stats that work in specific locations for specific scenarios and this is going to be awesome to watch it's going to be awesome to see how people are going to play around with this and how they're going to use it and this kind of builds on on everything we've seen at Kinemercy like the attraction flow the keyblade transfer Transformations and like all of that the way that people are going to use it and and like every gameplay you're going to see of Kingdom Hearts 2 is going to be slightly different because people are going to have their own play styles so adding the three keyblades at once I think is an amazing idea and I think it's been really cool and I think that's something really cool for me because there's been times like I like in a Kingdom Hearts game I usually have like a top two or three keyblades which I love and the fact that like end game I can just like equip those three and use them during battles awesome i don't have to keep switching them or like usually what i did in kingdom Hearts 2 is that i put my favorite one for base uh sora i put my second favorite for like say master form third favorite for final form etc and that's what i used to have to do but with this it just seems amazing and since each of them have their own keyblade transformations that gives even more potential for different gameplay styles so i think this was a really good idea now the last point uh about this geek.com review and i'm probably just gonna use this to end off the postings is that you can actually level up keyblades now now this is something that i mentioned I believe in my episode one of Shot Locked, and I mentioned that my brother told me about it, and I wasn't sure how true it was. And sure enough, someone actually commented. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name right now, but I'm sure it was someone who always comments my videos. Like I recognize the name, but they sent me a source, and it is true. So you will be able to level up your keyblades, and this is something I really like. Again, like kind of like with the three keyblade things, this is something that's gonna add a lot more variation. You're not gonna be able, you're not gonna be seeing everyone using the same keyblade end game, everyone using the same keyblade at the same points of game because. I think I mentioned this in a previous episode, but whenever I um, use Keyblades and like I get a new Keyblade, I usually don't want to move on to the next one either because it doesn't look good. And I already explained why I don't like some Keyblades in the Kingdom Hearts series, but like either it doesn't look good, so I don't want to go to it. Or for some reason, in some of the Kingdom Hearts games, they give you a Keyblade which is just worse in stats. Like I've, I've like I forgot which game it was, but I remember there's one game where you get a new Keyblade and it's just like the same or a bit worse, and then you get another one and it's like kind of the same thing. And I'm like, what's the point of these? Like I don't, I don't really get it but now with this all that's kind of like nullified even though i'm sure like the base stats of the keyblade is gonna matter like a lot like if this is a magic heavy keyblade i'm sure it's gonna remain a magic heavy keyblade but the fact that you can like uh, kind of like rely less on those stats and if there's a keyblade that you really like and the stats aren't the best but you can kind of level it up to be better than the other keyblades i think is really cool and if there's a keyblade i like i could just use it as at end game because i always end up using like you know the same keyblade everyone uses at the end of the game you know because it's the strongest one but now that i can use my favorite one and just level it up i think is an amazing choice and like a lot of these choices that they've been making in kingdom wars 3 just seem perfect they're amazing and things that i never even like thought about for some reason like when I thought about Kingdom Hearts 3, I thought it was going to be like Kingdom Hearts 2, but like, you know, a new game. But seeing them add all these features that are just amazing and, and like, varying, I think, is a perfect choice. And I'm really happy where they're going. And they may have more of these that we don't even know yet, like more features like these. And I just, I'm really loving it so far. So, uh, yeah, that, that's really all I wanted to say. I think this was a really cool review. And if you want to, like, know more, go to case13.com. I'll probably leave a link in the description for you to check it out yourself. But, yeah, I think that's all I have to say for the postings. And we'll just go to the reflecting report. All right, so Reflecting Report, like I mentioned in the past few episodes, Reflecting Report is where I talk about a certain aspect of Kingdom Hearts, say what I like about it, what I don't like about it, or just talk about it in general. And that's kind of what it is today. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Kingdom Hearts 2 intro. And there's a reason I want to talk about this is because it's kind of like... It, the opinions of it vary between people and if you don't know what I mean it's the intro of Kingdom Hearts 2 you know the whole part where you play with Roxas a lot of people don't like it now I'm not sure if this is just a people that aren't too into Kingdom Hearts or not because I think a lot of people who are you know like in the Kingdom Hearts community do like it or at least like you know are okay with it in my opinion like for me I really like the intro I, I honestly don't really see anything that's really too bad with it I'm going to be kind of explaining my points and like telling you why I think this and the reason like I'm 
this is even a thing on the reflecting report today is because i listen to podcasts and i listen to people's opinions and on twitter and all that i always see like people talking about kingdom hearts like huge kingdom hearts fans and then they talk about kingdom hearts 2 and they're like oh no they get the game like it's not that good and they really put all of it on the intro they're like the intro is just too slow it takes too long and that's something that i just can't agree with uh the first like thing that i i just like don't understand at all is when people say the tutorial for kingdom hearts 2 is too long which no the the thing the first mistake they make is they attribute the roxas part of the story as a tutorial which is completely wrong the tutorial is probably like an hour maybe two i haven't played kingdom hearts in a while an hour maybe two maybe even less but somewhere there that is a tutorial of kingdom hearts 2 i think it's probably shorter it has to be like an hour like the actual tutorial part of it but when you're not using sora people just automatically think like the, the entire roxas part is a tutorial which is wrong and the second part is the Roxas part is I feel like I feel like it's, it's pretty integral to the story it tells you a lot of things about the story and it makes the story better like overall because there has been like games like I mean tutorials or like intros in other games which is just like is, ju is just for the sake of the tutorial which gets boring like you're just like you know learning the game but they don't do it in a creative way i feel like this was a creative way they took an entirely new character introduced him introduced his plot and like give hints to the future of the game and wrapped it in kind of like in a way like so it looks like a tutorial which it is obviously but when you make a tutorial that's smart like that i feel like that's amazing and it's really good and like when people say it's too long I, that i don't get either like the roxas part isn't that long like sure it's like several hours long but then like i said it's part of the game just because you're not using sora doesn't mean it's bad like i feel like everything not everything but like a lot of things you can do with sora you can do with roxas and it is the starting of the game you shouldn't be too powerful and everything about it's so cool like fighting like the twilight thorn i feel like the struggle matches are fun going around town kind of living more as a normal boy doing the jobs i feel like those are all really cool and things that you usually don't get to do with sora and the fact that they had that i think it was really fun and like if you're interested in the story i feel like it's something you'll appreciate and you'll like and you won't have a problem with and if you're not interested with the story you can just skip the cutscenes, and if you skip the cutscenes, I can guarantee it is not that long. Like, a lot of it is the cutscenes. Like, whenever I replay Kingdom Hearts 2, and I don't feel like, you know, going through the cutscenes, because I've seen it so much time, I just skip them, and I'm, like, out of the rocks this part, like, in no time. Like, it doesn't take that long, so, like, that's what it is. If you think it's too long, and you care for the story, I, I just don't see it, but if you don't care for the story, just skip the cutscenes, I think that's all it is. So, like... That's, that's 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 just how I see it. If you if you disagree, let me know. I, I would love to know kind of your side of the story. If you do agree that's too long or some p part of it you just don't like, I really liked it. I like how they introduced kind of like Axel and the relationship between Roxas and Axel and how that connects to 350 over two days. I thought it was pretty genius, especially after I played 350 over two days. I really do like that game. I know a lot of people don't, but after I, I played that and then I like understood the connection between uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 and 358 over two days and playing Reaching the Memories and sees how that connects, I thought it was completely genius and I, I kind of love the intro even more. So I really like the intro. Yeah, one more point I just wanted to mention is that a lot of people who do complain about the intro, I've noticed, well, at least most of the people not all the people is that it's been a while since they've played the game i'm not gonna name any names of who i'm talking about it's it's, it's, it's not like people deep in the kingdom hearts community just like random podcasts and stuff that i listen to but they'll be talking about it like i love kingdom hearts but kingdom hearts 2 is, is not the highest on my list and the intro is pretty bad and like it's just something that like they try playing it but they can't get into and then like you know through the podcast they're talking about it and then they mentioned yeah yeah but i haven't played it since like the game came out and i'm like that that's kind of unfair like if you're basing it on a memory from like 10 years ago of course you can think it's long everything is exaggerated kingdom rush 2 is my favorite game and i can see why it's not the favorite game of many people's because you know i'm driven by nostalgia but even then i've played it a lot of times since then so like if you're basing the memory off nostalgia i really can't like have a conversation there because you're you're, you're, yeah, you're usually talking wrong if you're just basing it off memory and that's something that i've tried to fix too like even like talk, like talking about anything any kind of fandom not just like this intro if you're talking about anything and and you're arguing with someone and that person has seen it in the last like two weeks and you the last time you watched it or played it was in the last 10 years uh, chances are they're correct e even if you think you're correct they have a fresher point of view and a lot of the things you may have liked in the past may be worse when you played it when you play it or watch it you know uh, more recently and the other way around so like if you if you're basing off old memory I just can't like even have a serious conversation with you so like 
again with this if you think it's a bad intro i urge you to play it again and if you still think it's bad let me know in the comments below i'd really like to you know have a conversation see why you don't like it and hopefully i can see your side a bit better but that's all i want to talk about sorry if it was a bit ranty but i really just wanted to talk about this uh intro because while i was listening to the podcast it was kind of driving me crazy i'm like i gotta just get this off my chest so yeah that was a reflecting report and let's just get into dream drive now Alright, welcome to Dream Drive. This is where I talk about a dream for the future of Kingdom Hearts and I'll just talk about it, why I want it and hopefully, uh, like the last few episodes, a few of you haven't kind of, you guys like this segment the best I feel and you guys kind of give me your points of view so that was awesome. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about some kind of post-game content for Kingdom Hearts 3 and more specifically I want something like the Lingering Will in Kingdom Hearts 2 or like the data battles of Kingdom Hearts 2 which is kind of post-game but at the same time it's something kind of you unlock and that's something I really want in Kingdom Hearts 3. Now the data battles and Lingering Will isn't something that I was able to experience you know myself in um no no I wasn't able to experience it myself I wasn't able to experience when I was a kid playing it for the first time because I didn't have the final mix version I played on the PS2 and I, I, just, we just, I just didn't have access to it. A lot of people didn't have access to it. Now that I think about it, I could have had access to it, kind of, because when I was a kid, all the games I used to get, which I found out after were pirated, uh, my dad just used to take me to a flea shop. We used to buy, like, 10 PS2 games for, like, maybe, like, 20 bucks, and they were, the guy just burnt it for us. So, like, maybe I could have gotten it, but I did have the original you know like the original version not the final mix version so i didn't get to experience lingering will data battles and that's something i really hope we do get in kingdom hearts 3. i want some kind of post game content for kingdom hearts 3 that's similar to the data battles or the lingering will where it's kind of has like it, like when i first found out about it it kind of had like a feeling of secrecy i'm like what is this especially since i've played kingdom hearts 2 like a, a shit ton of times i played it so many times and then when i found out there's a final mix version and that had more content like this and that was awesome and the main focus i want to have for today's dream dive in terms of the post game content is that i want it i want it so this post game content or this secret boss battle has some kind of attachment to a future kingdom hearts game now this is going to be very hard to speculate about since we we don't know where the future of kingdom hearts is since this is going to be the end of the dark secret saga but like in kingdom hearts 2 when you fought the lingering will uh, at this point i already knew you know like i've already played birth by sleep and i knew about terra so the fact that so early on they had well it wasn't that early now to think about it but the fact that they had a connection with birth by sleep and they even had that like end game cinematic I think four years before the game come out, came out, I think Kingdom Hearts 2 was 2006, 2007, and Birth of Sleep was 2010-ish. So the fact that it was like that early, which isn't too early now that I think about it, but like it was so cool seeing that like a game that I've played since I was a kid, and then when I was a bit older, I played Birth of Sleep, and then when I go back to play that game when I was a kid, they had the Lingering Will there, they had you know the end game cinematic. It was just, it was just an amazing experience, and I really want something like that for Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh my bad. Uh, uh, I really want something like that for Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, again, it's gonna be very hard to speculate. I don't know what they can do. Uh, the only thing I can really think about is something to do with the Unchained Key back cover. I feel like the Unchained Key lore is so kind of it's kind of like mysterious and ambiguous we really don't know that much about it uh we know about the foretellers we kind of know about lushu we know the, about the masters and masters we know he has that book that he gave to each of them they have they have their own missions the dandelions and all that like we know like the like piece of it but we don't know how this kind of connection the main kingdom art story is just something the gave to us and we don't know that much about it we know that um Marluxia's somebody form is there. I forgot his name. Loriam. We know he's there somehow. A hundred years in the past. We know Ben is there. Hundred years in the past. So it's it's so mysterious how people we know in the present are hundred years in the past. Came from Tin Key. So I feel like what in at least in my opinion this isn't like confirmed or anything. I think all this setup with the foretellers and Lushu and all that. I think this is something that's not going to be like heavily answered in Kingdom Hearts 3. I feel like all this foreteller talk he gave us is going to be somewhat brought up in Kingdom Hearts 3. But I feel like most of the main focus is going to be in the next saga. That's just the way I think about it because... I feel like if he wanted to have a Kingdom Hearts 3, he wouldn't have introduced his soul late. I feel like it would have been like introduced before, but since introducing his soul late in a mobile game and like there's so much in it, it won't 100% be covered in Kingdom Hearts 3. I feel like some of it will be like the box that Lushu has. I feel like that will be probably covered in Kingdom Hearts 3 because I think they talked about it in a trailer. Yeah, yeah, I think Maleficent is looking for it. I think it's Maleficent or someone else, I can't remember, but 
I feel like some of it will be covered in a future game and just going with that I feel like the final or like secret boss battle in Kingdom Hearts 3 should be somewhat connected in some way to the foretellers or when I say foretellers I mean something in the Unchained Key universe I don't know what it could be it, it'd be freaking awesome awesome I don't know how it would be but if there was like some kind of like either like a data foreteller battle or something of the sort of lingering will where one of them is there or maybe they look kind of different and we have to fight them and people who play Unchained Key would like right away know who they are maybe not maybe they look a bit different and that's all we're left with they're like why are they there we have no idea and it'll be answered in the next game I feel like that'd be a perfect boss fight like one of the four tellers you just fight them they look slightly different if you play Unchained Key you know who it is but you have no idea why he's there and it's only going to be answered in the next saga and that's kind of going to be the intro to the next saga of Kingdom Hearts which I would love and that's kind of like the feeling I want in the next final boss battle of Kingdom Hearts 3. And when I try to think of like things other than that, I can't really think of too much. Like if we're not talking about boss battles, I can think of like a few things. Like if there's some kind of like post mini games or something like that. But other, but like I, I really just want to focus on boss battles. I know Kingdom Hearts One had one. Uh, if you don't know, I actually didn't finish Kingdom Hearts One myself. I fin I watched a let's play of it. It was Scoured Wings, I believe. Uh, I just don't like the game really. I, the gameplay just doesn't really mesh with me well. I try to play the game like three or four times, but I just drop it in the middle. Like when I get maybe like 10-15 hours in I just end up dropping it because I, I just don't really like it that much but I'll leave that for another video. But uh, so I, I think Kingdom Hearts 1 did have one. It was someone in the mysterious, I mean in the Organization 13 role but I can't remember who it was. It's probably like Xemnas or someone. But uh, uh, and like Birth by Sleep had one. I, I love Birth by Sleep. It was the mysterious figure which was young Xehanort which is awesome. Again Birth by Sleep connected directly to Dream Up Distance and they also had um Vanitas, uh, Vanitas's, uh, spirit or whatever it was, I forgot what, what the exact name they had for it, but that was an awesome one too. These boss battles are all amazing because they all have a sense of mysterious tune, like who are these guys, why is it here, why am I fighting like a spirit, like what do they want, it's just always like this mysterious weird thing and after we beat it, after like a hard battle, we still don't get an answer, it's just like... Like, what the hell was this? And, like, we, we usually get an answer years later. Or it could be, like, the answer's kind of hinted at, at from a game, like, years in the past. So, like, this is something that I want. And hopefully you guys can let me know down in the comments below if you guys have any idea for this i want to let this dream dive be more open discussion let me know what kind of boss battle you would want or if you have any ideas and i'll you know talk with you guys in the comments below so i think that's all i want to say that seems like everything i wanted for dream dive but yeah that's all i really wanted to say in dream dive some kind of boss battle in my, like for me i would want it to be connected to the foretellers because i don't think that's going to be fully covered or answered or just shown in kingdom hearts 3 i feel like the foretellers and that entire storyline was brought for the future of kingdom hearts at least for me so uh yeah that's been episode three of shot lock thank you guys for watching i uh, hope you guys enjoyed it remember this show now is on a lot of audio services i'll have the links down below and if you guys do listen to it please let me know i'd like to know how much of you guys actually listen to uh the audio podcast and if there's any kind of like changes or kind of a criticism you do want to give me about the show please let me know down in the comments i'm really open to suggestions and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode let me know down in the comments below anything i asked in this uh, video what you think about you know the data battles what you think about like anything else i talked about anything you want to let me know uh i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, remember to like comment subscribe let your friends know about the series if they're into kingdom Hearts, and i'll see you later